months and months and months ago, David Dobrik got exposed by another YouTuber, and in my opinion, it was actually for the greater good. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, sometimes what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community or pop culture or internet culture and try to see what lessons we can learn from them to try to improve our own lives. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. So yeah, this has been a video that's been on my mind for a little while. Like cancel culture is a big thing. It's been going on for a while now and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I think I mentioned it in another video. I'm thinking about doing a whole video about how cancel culture is one of the reasons why so many people are so anxious in 2019 and probably years to come as well. So yeah, David Dobrik, months and months and months ago, he was exposed by another YouTuber and it's probably not the situation that you're thinking I'm talking about. The situation I'm actually talking about is from August of last year and it was from none other than Elijah Daniels, all right? So those of you who don't know who Elijah Daniels is, he's a he's a YouTube creator, he's a rapper, he recently got engaged, congratulations Elijah. But anyways, so Elijah Daniels made a video around the time that, uh, what did they call it, Dramageddon was going on when, you know, it was like Manny MUA and Laura Lee and like Nikita Dragon and Gabriel Zamora and all that stuff was going on and everything. And, you know, Elijah Daniels was like in inspired to make a video and he, he titled it something along the lines of like, David Dobrik is a, a homophobic racist too, question mark, and be like, you know, it, it was, and, like, basically what he was talking about, basically what he was talking about is like, like people were losing their minds during that time and it's still something that happens whenever like controversy kind of comes up. Elijah Daniels was talking about how like YouTubers were like going through their, their old like tweets and everything and deleting anything that might be problematic and all this other stuff and everybody was like, freaking out because that's kind of what happened with Laura Lee. Laura Lee's old tweets were like brought up and everything and Elijah Daniels ended up like showing that even David Dobrik, one of the most lovable dudes on the platform, had some what would seem problematic tweets now, right? Like they would be problematic now, but back then they weren't. I want to explain more of like, more of what comedy was like back in those days. I'm not excusing anyone of anything. I'm not making excuses. I'm not defending anyone. Anyone who's apologized, like all that's their shit. But the internet, back then was very different than it is now. Like, and I think a lot of people, I mean, especially I'm seeing a lot of like, this person's homophobic, this person's homophobic because they tweeted like, that's so gay. But in 2012 and 2011, 2010, 2009, that's so gay and fat and things like that were, were acceptable things to say. And the point Elijah Daniels was trying to make was like, the internet used to be a different time, a different place where like people like, just said things and they, they said whatever and they did things that, you know, they talked and said things that might be deemed homophobic or racist or whatever. Like, those of you who don't know me, like, I'm actually half African American and like, I know this. I grew up in gaming culture, right? Like, I'm a gamer. I've been playing games since I was like five years old, like, original Nintendo, right? Like, that's what I've been doing. Then I got into online games and like, in online gaming, like, you know, people toss around, you know, racial slurs, sexist things, and, you know, like, and I, I was on, like, the football team and the wrestling team and the track team, and, you know, in, in that kind of, like, masculinity culture, there's, like, homophobic things that be tossed around and everything. And, like, not saying that that's okay, but today it's very problematic, right? And it's just fascinating to me because, like the title of this video, I, I believe David Dobrik got exposed, quote unquote, for the greater good because Elijah Daniels brought up uh, a bigger conversation. And it's kind of like, so there's this old like philosophical question, right? Where, <laughs> where there's like a trolley going down the tracks and if it keeps going on the path it's going, it's gonna hit a bunch of people and kill them, right? Or, but you have the option to pull a lever, it switches tracks and it only hits one person. What do you do, right? And this is something where 
where it's just an interesting question. And I made a video about the Avengers a while ago about uh, the, uh, the war between Captain America and Iron Man, and Iron Man is more of a utilitarian, right? Where he looks at just like the most realistic situations and says, okay, this is probably gonna give us the best net gain. So like when Elijah Daniels did that, like I, I got it, right? Like David Dobrik got like a little bit of flack, but it created a greater conversation. And it also made it onto the Philip DeFranco show. Like even Philip DeFranco like talked about this story. So one of the things I wanna talk about is, is just like this idea of judging people based on their past. I made a, I talked about this, I think in the Shane Dawson video I did the other day, but it's absolutely ridiculous to judge people based on their past, especially when it was like a different time, but people were different as well. Like you look at people like David Dobrik, right? Who's in his twenties, you know? Like he was a teenager not that long ago. I'm a 33 year old man, you know? So 10 years ago, whatever, like I was in my twenties. But also for somebody like myself and why I try not to judge people on their past is I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. I'm coming up on seven years sober in a couple months. And I don't want people judging me based on my past because I used to be an awful, terrible, terrible, terrible person, right? But there's still some things from my past, like, you know, just jokes I've made and things like that, where I'd just be like, like what Elijah Daniels is saying, like, it was, it was a different time. Like one of the most fascinating things to me, I think um, Ethan, um, from uh, H3H3 Productions made a video about like kids reacting to Seinfeld like in 2019 or was it 2018? I don't remember when that video was made. But like just showing how like offended or like touchy like kids were around these subjects of Seinfeld, one of the most like non-controversial shows ever created, like ever created, right? Like if anything, like from back in that era, like Roseanne, use like some more edgy humor and like, you know, around that time people were like trying to get edgier and edgier and edgier, right? But yeah, I just think it shows like the time that we're in with this like outrage culture. Like I really feel, I really feel like so many people are just waking up in the morning and it, I think it's subconscious. I don't think people intentionally do this, some might, but we're living in a time where people wake up in the morning and they're looking for something to get offended by. They're looking for it. And here's the thing, like I'm not, a, I'm not a psychologist or anything like that, but I'm a nerd when it comes to psychology, mental health, the way our minds work and everything. And like, there's a, a, a thing called selective attention theory, right? Where our brain focuses on what we train it to focus on. And when you combine that with uh, confirmation bias, it creates just like, a recipe for disaster. So let's say you don't like somebody. You don't like that person, right? And then you you read something that they, they tweeted out or an Instagram post, or you watch a video by them. Because of that bias that you already have, your selective attention is going to figure out what things they said that could be taken in an offensive way. Like, oh my God, I cannot believe they said this. Like one of the reasons I love comedians is because they do not give a damn, all right? They just don't care. Like, so many comedians, like I listen to their podcasts, like I was just uh, listening to the Chris Delia uh, podcast and like he's talked about it, I know Bill Burr's talked about it, some other comedians have talked about it, like every joke is going to offend somebody. It's going to offend somebody and we're such a selfish and self-centered type of species where we only care about our thing, right? Like if you say this thing and offended me, I care about this. You know what I mean? Like for example, if they made like, you know, fat jokes, I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. But right, but then if they made, you know, a joke about something else, I'd be like, ah, oh, that's funny. You see what I'm saying? Like we get offended by things that are personal to us and we care way too much about things that really don't matter. And I really think that context of jokes, like jokes especially, like I am a huge believer where like comedians, you know, they they are there to make us laugh at, you know, this, this sometimes horrendous world that we're living in, this crazy world that we're living in. And they're, they're there to bring some light to some serious topics. You know what I'm saying? But kind of the last thing I wanna talk about, again, like with Elijah Daniels using David Dobrik, um, you know, to get views on that video, like it was for a good reason. And, and here's the thing. Like, there's so many topics that I wanna discuss and because of things that happen with me, I'm like, uh, 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 I don't know if I should. But these are the types of things that get my wheels turning. Like, is it okay, 
right? Is it okay to talk about this, this one person if it might be able to get out a more positive message for the rest of them. And I think that's what a lot of commentary channels struggle with sometimes. Um, I talked about this a little bit in the I Nab a Response video I made, but I think commentary channels struggle with this a bit as well. And I think Leon Lush is probably somebody who recently went through this and it's, it hasn't been talked about. It's something that I noticed though, where he has figured out a way to keep doing what he's doing without necessarily like uh, uh, pissing off specific people. But anyways, I, I am still like, like my man Tony Stark, I am a utilitarian where I believe like if, if we have to talk about one thing to get out a more positive message, like I think that's important. I think that's what it is. You know what I mean? But I would love to know your thoughts on this whole topic down below in the comment section, whether it's about like cancel culture or like, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, affect one person to help many other people. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. All right, but again, Elijah Daniels, congratulations on your engagement. I have another video planned about David Dobrik. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that freaking notification bell, baby, because I make a ton of videos. And if Huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing, and I will be answering all your questions for the monthly Patreon Q&A this week. All right, thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.